has been a long time coming. I've had so many people ask me for my full story, my full testimony of ever since I started telling my story in bits and pieces on Instagram. I'm in a really squeaky chair, so hopefully, you know, it's, it's old, but it's pretty, so I refuse to get rid of it. <laughs> but if it's a distraction, Ooh, sorry. I've had so many people though ask me on Instagram, can you share your full testimony? Because they can see that God has done such a work in me once they hear kind of like the history and the trauma that I have from my childhood. And there's so much to my story in itself. Like I could probably spend three full days straight through talking about all the things that happened whenever I was a kid. And it probably still wouldn't get everything across. So I'm going to do my absolute best. This might be a two-part series just it, I don't we'll see how it goes but the first point that I want to hit on is truly like if there's anything you get from this video it is that God can do anything like the world will tell you there's only so much you can do like you know once an alcoholic always an alcoholic once a victim always a victim and I do not subscribe to that mentality because I know that God has worked in my life to where truly 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 I don't have these things affect me on a daily basis and it's not just because I've piled stuff on top of it and pushed it as deep down as I can but because truly through the work of the gospel in Jesus Christ I have hope and when people ask me what did you what what changed and i say you know it wasn't the medication they had me on for years it it wasn't the sleeping pills it wasn't the drugs it wasn't the alcohol like it wasn't my husband my kids my adopted parents they didn't give me purpose god truly was the only one who came in and changed me that like if you move away from this video right now i just want you to know that there is hope because there are a lot of people right now like the epidemic of being anxiety ridden and depressed and lost like it's a very real thing so i just want to acknowledge that and acknowledge that it was not any work that i did of myself but of things that were revealed to me from christ that did a work in me no story is beyond the fixing ability of Christ like nothing is beyond his ability nothing is outside of his control and he he really truly does use all things to to point back to his glory because these things that happened to me when I was in my childhood the abuse and the neglect and the homelessness like they point me towards a more grateful heart now like a, a more I'm a better mom because of some of the things that happened to me I'm a better wife because of the some of the things that happened to me a friend I can actually understand the hurt that people are going through that don't know Christ, that don't have the hope and the peace and the joy that comes through a relationship with Christ. So all that to be said, I don't want to start this story out with you thinking that I'm like the hero of this story because truly I am not. And all glory goes back to Christ. That being said, I think I should go back to the beginning of, uh, I grew up with a single parent. I, I wouldn't say grow up. I was, I had a single parent dad whenever I was a kid. My mom left when I was two months old. I have an older biological sister. I was two months old. She went out for a pack of cigarettes, never came back. I used to hold bitterness in my heart toward my biological dad because I just could, would think, how could you do that to you, the children that you love? Because I experienced physical abuse. He was an alcoholic. We had um, experienced homelessness. Sometimes we would be sleeping in cars, in hotel rooms. Um, and that happened all the way up until I was a kindergartner. I, like I said, I used to feel this bitterness toward him. And now as an adult, I don't know what I would do without my husband. I have Christ and he is my firm foundation. My biological dad wasn't a Christian at that time. I don't know if he is now, but he, he wasn't at the time. I don't know the crushing weight that would be experienced as a single parent. I don't know that I wouldn't turn to alcohol for uh, a relief at the end of the night. How stressful it must have been to have two little girls depending on you. Now that's not to say that, that it justifies anything that he did because he lost his temper on us a lot. But it helps me to understand to have some compassion in order to forgive him. I have hold no hard feelings toward him as an adult. I genuinely don't, I don't. And, and the only way I can say that is that like I can acknowledge that everything that he did was horrible and we may not be able to have a relationship because of it. But at the end of the day, I have total forgiveness and I don't hold any ill will toward him. God has completely freed me from that. Um, whenever I was three years old or four years old, I can't remember kind of the time kind of blurs together. My sister broke her leg because my biological dad uh, 
pushed someone and they landed on her leg. So that kind of, it was a, it was a bone that's really hard to break. And so like red flags went up and that was the very first time that we went into the foster care system because they saw abuse and they saw signs of abuse. So we went into the foster care system and I, it was hard. That point in time in my life was really hard because I didn't understand. I was too young to understand what was going on. And I was always asking like, where's my dad? Where's my dad? And I remember at one point, like a foster mom looking at me, this is one of the only memories I have being in the foster care system at that point was your dad's not coming like get over it your dad's not gonna come here for you and um we, we actually did end up going back to live with my biological dad we lived with him until i was in kindergarten and when i was in kindergarten we experienced homelessness this is when we stopped being able to like we we would uh live in hotel rooms every now and then most of the time we, we would sleep in our car and i didn't realize you weren't like that wasn't normal like it's not normal to sleep in your car. But so I was telling anybody and everybody. I remember being in kindergarten and the second time after I went back to live with my dad, I went back into the foster care system and I was sitting in the office. And if you've ever been without a parent, you know how important it is to have that other parent in your life. Because as a little girl, all I wanted was to have a mom. And I had a dad and I was blessed to have a parent at all but truly the the love of a mother i craved it i wanted it i was jealous of anybody that had it and so i remember sitting one day in the office and i like it was parent teacher conference day dad wasn't there yet they had me sit over off to the side and there was this woman she was checking someone out and looking at her thinking like man she's so pretty she had brown hair like me and i remember thinking like the her kid is so lucky like whoever she's here for her parent teacher conference or whatever they're so lucky and um i i remember thinking like i wish that was i wish that was my mom like i wish i had a mom like that and i thought this often it wasn't like a new thought but uh that i look over and i see my dad coming up the steps and there's some police officers at the front and i was like huh they stopped him and i remember thinking they're probably he's getting in trouble because he's late to pick me up but i should probably tell them like no it's parent teacher conference they knew he was going to be late this and that as i look back to this woman she's approaching me the one that was checking people out otherwise i was thinking oh i want that to be my mom she comes up to me and she tells me she's a caseworker from uh, social services and that i'm actually going to be going with her today and that i'm going to be going into care and that i'm going to be allowed to say bye to my dad but that you know um i had to to go in, into foster care and I remember thinking like I'm feeling betrayed like oh my gosh I wanted this woman to be my mom and now she's taking me and I felt like I betrayed my dad and it was a I had all of these feelings that were rushing in and that I was like being flooded with of just like I didn't even know what to think but I got to go and I got to say goodbye to my dad and at this point we were experiencing homelessness but we were also experiencing um abuse and we constantly had like head lice we we didn't have like the right it was a horrible horrible time and so they weren't just taking us because we didn't have a place to live like they could tell something was going on we go into the hallway and there's the police officers that are standing there and the caseworker and they let me sit on my dad's lap to say bye i remember like he whispered in my ear like don't tell them anything of course they got mad and they said like how don't you dare like say anything like that to her and um all right that's enough and and so they knew something at that point there's definitely something going on I go into foster care and that was the last time I ever lived with my dad I lived with my sister when we initially went into care we went through several homes and and, and one of the homes that we ended up at I call the house of horrors I'm getting short on time so I'm gonna go ahead and make a part two where I go kind of into like the next part of my story in the foster care system it seems dark right now but truly, every single aspect, hindsight 2020, I see God in every single part. And I see God protecting me through the woman that I wanted to be my mom, but that ended up taking me into foster care, which was one of the best things that could have uh, happened to me at that point. I see God in the teachers at the school. I see God in all aspects um, of my story. And so I can't wait to share the next part. Be sure to like and subscribe. That way that you're notified when I upload that. Um, and I'll try to get it up pretty quickly. Thank you guys so much for following along. And I'm, I'm so glad that God has taken this dark part of my life and truly used it as a way to shine 
his glory. God always shines brightest in the darkest places. And even though the next part of my story, it's even darker, I know that God had a plan and a purpose for me. And I'm excited to share that with other people to be able to spread hope. See you next time.